Well, thanks very much, John, and uh, thanks everyone for being here today. Uh, I will throw a spanner in the works, John. I, do, I did grow up in Geelong. Uh, I'm a Geelong supporter, but I did have the fortune to play at Carlton for, for one year. Uh, and so I do still have a soft spot for the Blues, uh, but also here in New South Wales, uh, our two AFL clubs in this region, the Swans and the Giants, and I'll, I will touch on those teams a little bit later. Um, but firstly, could I thank uh, Armit and the team at Affinity uh, for this invitation to present today. Uh, I'm extremely honoured and grateful to be able to be here, and uh, I really appreciate the, the beautiful lunch that we had, uh, had, had just then, and uh, yeah, that was lovely. Um, I too would also like to acknowledge the lands that we meet on today of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation uh, and I'd like to acknowledge Elders past, present and future. Um, the AFL is honoured uh, by our relationship with our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and we look forward to continuing to work in partnership with First Australians in their struggle for full recognition and equality. I've spent a large part of my professional working life in a very privileged position. Privileged because I work in sport, and sport is central to the way Australia defines itself. And privileged because the sport I work in is the game that I grew up with at home in Geelong and now here in Sydney, uh, and I continue to deeply love and cherish our game. And privileged because the game I love is also loved by so many people across so many communities in Australia. And to be a guardian of this game, even for a short time, is something that I never take for granted. The AFL has re recently refurbished our purpose, as, in, as is common practice for many, many organisations. And our purpose is to progress the game so that everyone can share in its heritage and its possibilities. Everyone. So everyone can share in its heritage and possibilities. It sounds pretty simple, but if this purpose is to be really understood, and if we are really to live up to it, we at the AFL must continually challenge ourselves to understand how our game can be loved and cherished by all Australians. Everyone. And of course, being loved and cherished by, by all Australians mean having a deep, means having a deep understanding of modern Australia and the diversity of our community. A few years ago, our AFL club CEOs had the opportunity to listen to Waleed Ali, commentator, TV host, and Richmond tragic. He, not a Carlton tragic, John, a Richmond tragic. Um, and he talked to us about the mirror test, that people can't be what they can't see. And his challenge to us was this, that if our game didn't look like Australia, and if Australians couldn't see themselves in our game, whether that be as players, administrators, coaches, or the window of our game, being the media, then we no, had no right to, to encourage people to love our game like we do. And I don't need to tell this audience what modern Australia is. We come from every corner of the planet, from nearly 200 countries, with more than 300 languages spoken in Australian homes, and more than one in four of us are born overseas. We are a multi-faith but secular society and we are one of the most successful multicultural communities in the world. But, and, and I'd like to quote from a recent speech to the Melbourne Press Club by one of our AFL commissioners, Kim Williams. Kim said, We live in difficult times. We see strong threats to the values of connection, belonging and community. All the things in our great game that are genuinely loved Fear of the other, fear of the outside, fear of the future appear to dominate discussion of nationhood and citizenship. I tend to agree with Kim. There's an increasing stoking of fear in our society, but what I'm driven by is the opportunity. And it's the opportunity that, I, that our game can bring. Our game brings a vital sense of connection, belonging and community which can be part of the antidote for Australia. Our job at AFL New South Wales ACT is to grow and progress the game. And we are driven not only by participation and attendance figures, but by embedding our game in communities throughout the state and territory and showing this is a game for everyone, regardless of your race, gender, sexuality, creed or religion. 
At its best, our game is much more than sport. It's something that builds leadership, confidence and strong bonds across a multiplicity of cultural backgrounds. I'd like to tell you a story about one such community club right here in Sydney and a talented young player that represents those ideals in our game. Dima Jarra is a young player for the Bankstown Bull Sharks in Western Sydney that highlights the potential for our game to achieve cross-cultural understanding. Dima grew up in Bankstown in a Muslim family after seeing AFL for the first time she was determined to play this new and exciting game. Her next step was to ask her dad, Stephen, can I play? Unfortunately, Dima was told no, not once, not twice, but three times by her dad. Her family had no clue what this sport was and Stephen des describes Dima as his diamond and he wasn't going to let his diamond get involved in a sport that he'd never seen or heard of. Still, Dima implored her dad and in her own words, the first time she saw AFL, it was love at first sight. She told her dad all she wanted was a fair go and eventually that was good enough for him. Stephen went to our first game and Stephen might be with us to join us a little bit later but he absolutely loved it. He loved watching his daughter out there playing AFL's, AFL, the Australia's Indigenous game. She took hold of the ball, ran down the middle, uh, passed it to a teammate, and he stood to applause. And he still, to his credit, hasn't stopped applauding since and supporting his daughter Dima play our, play our game. In Stephen's words, Dima became more than a gifted player. She became a beacon of inspiration for her community, showing friends and family that in Australia, you should never be judged by your background or what you wear. Instead, you should be judged by your character and your actions. After playing for the Bull Sharks, Dima was spotted by one of our talent team and represented her state in her chosen sport. Then Dima was selected to promote the AFL in a national TV campaign right across Australia, a national ad campaign. Who's seen that? Brilliant. Amazing. That was the most popular TV commercial we've seen out of Sydney for a long, long time, and that was Dima from the Bankstown Bull Sharks. And the tagline of the campaign was apt, don't believe in never. Dima could never have achieved what she has without the support of her family and her local community and the committed players and volunteers that make up the Bull Sharks. Those words rang true, not only for Dima's family, but for Dima herself, a young Muslim girl in Bankstown who now is a star player and a leader for her team at the Bull Starks, having never, never heard of our game only a few years ago. Dima now dreams of making AFLW our national women's competition, and few would bet against her making that transition and playing at the elite level, and to becoming an even more prominent leader in her community. But clubs like the Bankstown Bull Sharks and players like Dima are helping to shape our game into one that reflects the changing face of Australia and the exciting possibilities that this represents and delivers on our promise, connection, belonging and community. I would like to acknowledge Amna and Layal are here with us today. Um, they are, have been the founders, Amna in particular, Amna Hassan, the founder of the Auburn Giants, uh, one of our original clubs in Western Sydney, and it's great to have you here today with us, Amna. Dima's individual story is replicated by many of our communities, and these stories occur because of the commitment and investment by our code and clubs in diversity and community development. A few kil kilometres west of the SCG stand the Greater Western Sydney Giants, the Giants started their journey in the AFL in 2012 off the back of the AFL's expansion into New South Wales and Queensland from the southern states. A start-up in any industry faces challenges on many levels, and at the AFL it's no different. The AFL has expanded with two teams in every major non-Victorian market, and the Giants set up shop building a team largely from scratch, with young, determined players, but they lacked crucial on-field experience. Similarly, off the field, they arrived in a part of Sydney where AFL had little, little foothold or fan base. If the Giants were to succeed, they would have to engage with the diverse range of communities that lived right on their doorstep. From their inception, the Giants have worked relentlessly to engage with the multicultural communities of Western Sydney. Led by Ali Farage and Imad Alcare, 
the Giants community team, with our multicultural programs director, Nikki Flamboris, the club has built strong relationships with a, with a range of community leaders and stakeholders. The Giants understood that star players who took spectacular marks was not enough. To connect to their neighbouring community, they needed to listen and engage with them beyond football. And I'm proud to say that the club has certainly done this, with star players such as Stephen Coniglio rep representing them as a multicultural ambassador, ambassador speaking eloquently on the power of sport to unite. His teammates continually go above and beyond in forging bonds with the local, local multicultural community, some who haven't even seen a Sharon before. For the last five years, the Giants have held an annual Iftar dinner at their Learning and Life Centre in Sydney Olympic Park. And I'm frequently told that this is one of the best Iftar dinners that you could ever attend, and I know that it is uh, one of the great events on the AFL calendar here in Sydney. And for those of you who haven't had the opportunity, I recommend it, get down there. Uh, it is absolutely fabulous, fabulous where local school kids uh, get around, cook beautiful local cuisine, uh, where a multitude of communities come and mix and gather together uh, at the Learning and Life Centre. And this dinner traditionally happens just before the annual Multicultural Festival, which is supported by Multicultural New South Wales, where we celebrate diverse cultures that help make our game great. Alongside the football at Spotless Stadium, there's music, uh, food from around the world that helps highlight why the Giants have got such a role to play in our game. And the festival celebrates the diverse communities that we have uh, and the contribution that they've made to the game, and it's about welcome, welcoming new communities to our game into the future. And the Giants represent more than football. They are connecting with the rich communities that surround them and highlighting the role that our game can positively play in lives, whether that be as a fan or as a participant. And again, representing the three values in action, connection, belonging and community. Of course, it'd be very foolish of me, as my role as CEO of AFL New South Wales ACT, not to mention our other AFL club in this market, the Sydney Swans. The Swans, they've made diversity their brand through their diversity action plan and it absolutely goes to the heart and soul of that football club. From their commitment to the Pride game, the club's participation at Mardi Gras and their an an unparalleled support of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander players and commitment to recognition, they are a shining light on the three values of connection, belonging and community. And the story of Aaliyah Aaliyah shows what sport can do to bring out the best in society and community. Aaliyah was born in a refugee camp in South Sudan, in Kenya, to South Sudanese parents before moving to Australia in 2003, eventually settling in Brisbane. Aaliyah arrived in Australia unsure of himself and unable to speak English. He says the best way that he could communicate and engage with Australians was through sport. Alia discovered our game at high school and eventually played in a world team made up of multicultural players in the AFL National Under-16 Championships. It was on this event that Alia was travelling out to one of the games when he was sitting on a bus with his teammates. And he was sitting next to a player called Ruben. They began chatting. It turns out that Ruben was Alia's long-lost cousin. Separated in a refugee camp in Kenya. This game, our game, has brought these two families together. One was in Perth, one was in Brisbane. They've re since reunited. And now, through following his talented player pathway, Aaliyah was drafted by the Swans in 2013. And now, Aaliyah Aaliyah is one of the game's great elite defenders. But far more, in, more importantly, Alir is an extremely articulate and engaged young man who has shown what is possible in sport as a role model, not only in his community, but for all recent young arrivals in Australia who arrive unsure of what the future might hold. Indeed, Alir's inspirational effect has reverberated beyond our shores. In 2016, the then Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull spoke of Aaliyah's remarkable story at a United Nations conference in New York, which was convened by former US President Barack Obama. Turnbull pointed to Aaliyah as a shining example of the success of Australia's migrant policy. In fact, 
He was recently acknowledged, Aaliyah, as one of the top 10 most culturally influential Australians, alongside his compatriot, Mad Jack Daw, who plays for the North Melbourne Kangaroos in the AFL. When Aaliyah and Mad Jack played against each other this season, it was widely celebrated and applauded. And coincidentally, and worth noting, that this was happening right at the same time as local politicians were trying to create fear about African migration. Aaliyah has proven the power of our game to break down barriers in this country and its capacity to forge strong relationships and build young Australian leaders, not only on the national, but on the world stage. But of course, we also have our challenges. The AFL, like all of Australia, has battled racism and bigotry. As a code, we have been extremely privileged to have Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander leaders who have stood up and challenged our game to be better. Names like O'Loughlin, Goods, Rioli, Wanganeen, Winmar are as famous as any in our game and their legacy is absolutely cherished. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples have been involved in our game throughout its life. From the foundations of the game over 150 years ago to their continued representation at the elite level. Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander peoples represent 3% of the population, yet they represent 10% of the elite AFL lists playing in the elite AFL competition. And today, I am extremely proud that at AFL New South Wales ACT, 6% of our workforce is of Aboriginal descent. However, the AFL hasn't always got it right and we continue to strive to make the game as inclusive as possible and we have many great stories to tell, such as being the first sporting code in the world to have a racial, religious, uh, a racial vilification policy. Let me take a couple of minutes to tell you how that story came to be. In 1993, in a game at Victoria Park, St Kilda player and AFL great Nicky Winmar was receiving a stream of racial abuse throughout the whole game. In what has become an iconic moment in Australian sport, as the final siren sounded, Nicky lifted his jumper and he pointed to his skin. He says of the day, people forget words have a big impact. They can lift a person or destroy a person. So that day, I responded by saying to those people, and I still say it today, I'm black and I'm proud. That image is etched in the minds of all of us who work in this game. And two years later, after Winmar's brave stance, another Indigenous player faced vile abuse, this time from an opposition player. Essendon player Michael Long was racially abused by a Collingwood player in a fiery game between rivals Collingwood and Essendon. Long advocated for policy reform in AFL, arguing that as an AFL employee, as a player, he should be free from discrimination on the field. This controversy led directly to the AFL's innovative racial vilification policy, the first of its kind anywhere in the world. And this was headed by my esteemed former colleague, the late and great Tony Peake. Tony worked tirelessly on this groundbreaking initiative. He worked with former Indigenous stars, Michael Long, Michael McLean, Gilbert McAdam, Shay Cockatoo, to Collins seeking their feedback at every level of the consultation process. And for Tony, the policy had always been about education and understanding. Education that ensured that no Indigenous player should be vilified on or off the field. And if it did happen, severe penalties would be introduced. In our local football leagues, any incidents of vilification are taken really seriously, and they're, but they're handled through mediation, education, in the worst cases, penalties. And I'm first to acknowledge that our game acted too slowly in standing up to support Sydney Swans legend Adam Goods, who was subject to racial abuse, taunts and boos throughout the 2015 AFL season. I still remember receiving an email at that time from an AFL Sydney junior club Willoughby Wildcats player, Hugh McLeod, who'd hatched a simple plan to show his sport support for these hero goods. When he took the field for the Wildcats under 12s, he would write the number 37 on his upper arm. That was Adam's number. Soon, countless kids at Willoughby Wildcats and at a number of other clubs right across Sydney 
and New South Wales followed Hugh's lead. The players had a simple message. Adam, we support you. To see the grassroots community unite to get behind this issue and to support their hero was absolutely incredible to see and just a great example how our, the grassroots of our game can nourish the elite just as the elite nourishes and helps drive and grow the grassroots. I was so proud that day that young Hugh and his teammates took the lead to show their support for Adam as, long, as well as with the Sydney Swans uh, and told them that this racism was absolutely unacceptable and intolerable. We now have strong policies on crowd behaviour and the AFL learnt from the Adam Good situation, causing us to reflect and amend on how we deal, deal with racism in our crowds. And we are again reviewing our policies and how we handle these incidents and we're due to make some announcements in the coming months. We also know that we have a broad reach through football and use this power and influence to celebrate Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples as a force for positive change. The AFL has a multitude of programs that support and engage Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people right across our country. Our best known is our Sir Doug Nichols Indigenous Round that celebrates the history, culture and contribution to the game from Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. In addition to the Sir Doug Nichols Indigenous Round at the elite level and the Swans Marn Group game, we see countless community clubs across New South Wales and ACT running their own Indigenous Rounds. Last year, we had 15 local clubs celebrate the rounds with welcome to countries, statements from Uluru, smoking ceremonies in and special Indigenous Guernseys to create and celebrate this round. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have helped shape Australian football into the incredible game that we watch today. And it's our responsibility to work with their communities is not simply confined to what happens on the field. Locally, for the last 12 years, the AFL New South Wales ACT Indigenous Academies in Western Sydney have delivered specific cultural, education and leadership programs to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander school students. The academies are a program to support and empower Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students to take control of their future through in-school and after-school support, and we are so proud of our contribution to helping improve the educational outcomes for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities of Western Sydney. And it's great to have Charlie Sue here, our leader of those academies today. As I said earlier, the AFL's purpose is to progress the game so that everyone, regardless of background, can share in its heritage and its possibilities. This is our privilege and our responsibility and we are utterly committed to deepening engagement with diverse communities, and that has been copper fastened with our key partnership with Multicultural New South Wales. We have also received great support from the New South Wales Go Government and New South Wales Minister for Multiculturalism, Ray Williams, uh, as we seek to build relationships with multicultural communities in this region and strive for our sport to be the mirror of Australian society. Our game pro pro possesses incredible power, power to shape, mould and inspire young Australians to share in something great. I firmly believe that when government and sport unite into positive action, in our case striving for connection, belonging and community for all Australia, the possibilities are endless. AFL means much more than spectacular goals and winning premierships. Success for us isn't about just what's on the scoreboard at the final siren. Australian football has the capacity to act as the glue that binds diverse communities together to consistently create positive change. It is a game that has produced outstanding athletes such as Aaliyah Aaliyah, Adam Goods, Stephen Caniglio and future stars like Gemma Jarra, who do not simply define their impact by what they do on the field but also for their capacity and leadership and inspiration off it. At its best, our iconic Australian game has a, the power to change lives both on and off the field, crucially promoting the connection, belonging and community. We relish this opportunity and we are passionate that our game continues to help shape a multicultural society that we can all be proud. Thank you Affinity for inviting me today. Thank you all for being here. And I really look forward to welcoming you all to a game of AFL into the future. Thank you.